This is Dr. Paula Rosen, publisher of Education Update, in an exclusive interview with Dr. Robert Greenberg, acting dean of the College of Arts and Sciences at Hunter College. He's one of the most unusual deans in the nation. At the age of 13, he developed retinitis pigmentosa, which rendered him partially blind. By the time he got to graduate school, he needed readers. Nevertheless, he got Fulbright Scholarship, studied in Yugoslavia, majored in Slavic languages, and obtained a PhD from Yale. His life is a triumph of the human spirit. I was, I was diagnosed with retinal degeneration when I was about 13. So how many years ago? I don't know. I'm 40, almost 49, so 36 years ago. Um, the, the first symptom of retinal degeneration, this condition, retinitis pigmentosa, is night blind. So I was pretty much night blind. But the, you know, for those first 13 years until the diagnosis, I was able to read and was I'm not walking around with Czech, 
will be different Slavic languages. So you so had readers who I were proficient to, in right, those languages. I had to find those readers, and and and, but I kept on schedule. I mean, I, I, I became a teaching fellow. I mean, it was not, nothing was easy in those days because there was a lot. Of, first of all, they saw me at, at, as having gone through that transition. So my um, professors at Yale were not so sure that I could really handle it, right? Mm -hmm. Because it wasn't like I can't, if you come in blind, it's sort of like you've proven yourself, but here I am coming in and becoming blind while there. It's a lot harder for them to swallow that. But luckily, um, they gave me a chance and I taught uh, as a teaching fellow in 1986, 87, my first year as a, and I also did my, my comprehensive exam. I kept to my schedule. I, I did the exams on time. I didn't. I didn't uh, lose any time. Um, they accommodated me. They made um, some of these exams oral, you know, that were not oral, or you know, could use the computer. And um, what were some of the other accommodations they made? Mostly, mostly they just. I mean, there were. They, they just then they were starting to have scanners. Um, so I started to have a scanner. But the state of New York was still sponsoring me. I was still a resident of New York, and they helped me. They bought a computer for me with one of those speech synthesizers, which okay. were much more um, primitive by then. It was right. the nineteen eighties, but that helped a lot. So I had a computer. I had. Um, Remember the program that you were using? Because now you're saying you're using Jaws. It wasn't called Jaws. I. Blanking as well, that's okay, it but it was Vert yeah, Plus. It was, it was called Vert Plus. Okay. <laughs> and it was this huge card that you put in one of those AT, okay. uh, PSAT, you know, the personal computer, the IBM AT computers. Right. You know, and, and it was it was cumbersome. You well, didn't, it wasn't on the laptop. What do you anything. use besides JAWS today? Uh, I use a, a, a little note taker called PacMate, which talks as well. I use a little. Um, camera scanner that can, uh, I could take a picture of this page and it will read the page to me. Mm -hmm. um, all this was uh, provided by the employer by Hunter College. Mm -hmm. And I use, uh, what else do I use? A scanner, mm -hmm. so we can scan a lot of things, both things can come in electronically. So it's, it scans and then reads it to you? Yes, we have okay. both a desk mm -hmm. scanner and a, and a handheld scanner. Anyway, uh, back then, we didn't have the, quite that technology, but there was an office that helped with, with scanning and things like that. So I, I, I did that. Um, I remember also in 1988-89, I applied for a Fulbright to do my dissertation research in Yugoslavia. And I remember um, one of the, I was accepted, everything was fine, I was about to go, and I needed to get a physical done. And the doctor at the Yale Health Plan didn't want to approve my going on a Fulbright, thinking that because of the blindness it would be, you know, I'd be endangered or something. So there were, there were still mm -hmm. lots of you know, obstacles that we had to overcome. Sure. Of course, I challenged that doctor and complained, and of course he, he you know, it was, it was discriminatory, sure. what he was trying to do. Did and you go? I did go. I did go. I had right. a great time. Right. So you have to what be... What country was that? Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia. 89, wait, before it broke apart. And that was very, that changed my career because my, my, my career became, my research became all focused on Yugoslavia. Um, I went back repeatedly and, and I became an expert on language and ethnicity in the form of Yugoslavia. So that was important to do. I mean, had I not been um, standing up to that, that attitude and trying to change it, it would not have been, you know, I, I wouldn't be where I am today. Where did you derive the strength to have the tenacity to forge ahead and to, to right. do this because if you hadn't right. advocated well, for yourself really. The good news is there are there is one organization that has been very helpful throughout my, my career which is called the National Federation of the Blind and in 1986 I was a scholarship recipient of the National Federation of the Blind. Again, you, you look for sources. It was yeah. something that the New York State Commission for the Blind sent me you know, apply for the scholarship, it might help you. Well, I applied, but if they don't just give you a check. They, they ask you to come to their a week-long convention, in, and this was in Kansas City, Missouri in July of 86. And the reason they do this is they really want you to get something more than just a check. And that's where I derived a lot of strength because I met a lot of people who had gone through with the things I was going through, who, mm -hmm. who did not give up, who did not sit at home. I mean, 
the truth of the matter is 75% of white people are still unemployed. 